Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode three of the Trav Torch Show. I'm your host, Trav Torch, and I'm flying solo today. No guests, and that's fine. I got some good information for you. On today's episode, I'm going to be discussing recording studio preparation and etiquette. So I'm going to make sure you know exactly what you need before you go to the studio if you even need to be in the studio, as well as how to conduct yourself while you're in the studio. Before I get started, though, a uh, quick Trav Torch update. I shot a video for Don't Leave Me. Uh, it's going to be dropping uh, hopefully in a few weeks or less. So stay tuned for that. Shout out to uh, True Pack Back, uh, Troop House Films for shooting that video. Um and without further ado, let's get started. Let's get right into this information for you. So um, first things first, before you even go to the studio, make sure that you've practiced whatever song you're going to be recording. Why is that important? It's important because the studio is not an ideal place to be figuring things out, to be experimenting, especially when most reputable studios cost at least $50 an hour, and that's not even including sometimes an engineer. So you want to make sure that you've practiced the song so much that you know it inside out. So you're just going in there, you can knock out the song, and you don't have any issues. Um, a good idea is to get just a very inexpensive home set up, something where you can record yourself and that way you can create reference tracks of, of how the song is supposed to go. So go through multiple drafts with your home set up until you have it perfected and then go into the studio. Um, once you do that, you got to be serious with yourself and ask yourself, you know, is this is this song good enough to pay to record professionally? Uh, be real with yourself. If you're not sure, uh, seek input from people you trust and see what they say. Make sure you have the proper license or permission to use the beat that you're getting ready to record to because there's nothing worse than making a song or paying for studio time to record to a beat that you can't even use legally. Um and one quick thing about beats, uh, when you go to the studio, they're not going to have the beats for you. So don't go to the studio saying, you know, what beats do you have? They don't have beats at the studio. So get your beat beforehand and make sure you have the appropriate license to use the beat before you even make the song and before you think about going to the studio. Also, you should understand the studio that you're going to. Call ahead or if they have a website, even better, go on their website. You know, you have to find out, do they have a house engineer or do you need to bring your own or hire one? The engineer, by the way, is the person who works the uh, the mixing mixing console, you know, who operates the uh, equipment that's in the studio, the person that records you. You know, sometimes you have to bring your own or hire somebody. And if they have a house engineer, what's that house engineer's reputation? You know, what what uh, what clients have they worked with? Are they are they you gotta find out, are, are they good? You know, you don't want to get to the studio and have to work with a house engineer that's not very good. Uh, find out if their fee is included in the hourly rate or if it's extra. And know the equipment that the studio has and let them know beforehand which equipment you want to reserve for your session so for example if they have a list you go on their website and you see a list of microphones and there's a specific microphone that you want to use you need to call and let them know hey for this session i want to make sure that i have this microphone because if you don't someone else may request it who may be recording at a different a room in the studio and they may be using the microphone and you get there and you find out you can't even use the microphone that you wanted to use which was maybe the reason why you picked that studio in the first place so familiarize yourself with 
basic mixing terms before you get there, such as equalization or EQ, compression, reverb, and delay. Um, I don't want this video to be about, or this, this podcast to be about explaining what those things are. I want you to do your research, but I'll just briefly go over what EQ, compression, reverb, and delay are. Um, equalization or EQ has to do with boosting or reducing frequencies to make a sound sound how it's supposed to sound or sound differently in the mix. Uh, compression is basically the art of squeezing a sound or controlling the dynamics of the sound. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, I worked with a uh, engineer before and I felt like the engineer had too much compression on my vocals because I felt like the compression was squeezing my vocal so much that it was crushing the dynamics, so it was killing the performance. And, you know, we went back and forth, and he, he basically told me, well, you know, I don't believe that you can ever have too much compression, and that's when I realized that we didn't need to be working with each other. But I knew the term, and because I knew the term and I was familiar with with how it sounds versus what, he was doing on his end I was able to determine that you know he wasn't the right engineer for me and and therefore I was able to make an adjustment uh, reverb is kind of like the I want to say like an echo or or reverb basically emulates different spaces so you can have a reverb that makes it sound like you're in a room or in a church or or in a large hall or, or whatever, that's that's reverb, and you can increase or decrease the reverb uh, depending on your liking. And delay is basically kind of like an echo um, for your vocals. So in terms of equalization, know the difference between low, mid, and high frequencies. Low frequencies are bass, drum instruments, Mid frequencies tend to be vocals. High frequencies tend to be higher pitched instruments. But know that if, let's say your vocals sound muffled, you might need to increase the mid and high frequencies. Or if they sound too boomy, you might need to decrease the low frequencies. So basically this is important because you need to be able to speak the language somewhat as best you can in technical terms to whatever engineer you're working with so that you can get the sound you want. The, the engineer may not be able to read your mind uh, and they may not have a good working relationship with you, but at least if you can communicate with that engineer what needs to happen, you can make sure adjustments get made and you can get the sound that you want. But it's, it's important that uh, you have a basic understanding of those those basic terms as i said equalization compression reverb and delay at a bare minimum so let's transition to what you should bring to the studio you should bring with you a hard drive with your instrumental containing the stems or track outs whatever you want to call it unless you can upload the files to let's say dropbox or something similar and the studio has the ability to download those files for your session but it's all it's it's always good to have multiple methods so you know you can do the Dropbox but also have the hard drive because what if the Wi-Fi goes out in the studio and they can't download your session or what if your hard drive breaks but then you got the the Wi-Fi access so it's good to always have both you want to make sure you you cover all your bases if you can some studios allow you to send the engineer your session in advance so that when you get to the studio, they already have your session loaded up. That works, too. So that's something to look into. Make sure you bring water, cough drops or some type of some type of throat lodgings, especially if you're a singer. Bring some snacks. You may get hungry. And if you don't want to, like I say, you're going for just a few hours, you know, you may just need just to eat 
a bag of chips or whatever real quick to hold you over so you're not wasting too much time. If you're going for a longer session, maybe eight hour session, you know, you're going to need to bring a lunch. I recommend just getting a deli sandwich and that way you don't have to worry about warming anything up or anything like that. Just take it out, eat it and then get back to get back to your session. If you're recording, you should bring with you a vocal producer. What is a vocal producer? A vocal producer is someone who produces your vocals, someone who can get the best performance out of you, someone monitoring you while you're recording. And that's that's going to tell you like, hey, I think you could do that a little bit better or that note was off key or maybe you should sing it this way or rap it this way instead. Don't count on the engineer there to be your vocal producer. Some engineers aren't even that musically inclined. They just understand what they're doing from a technical aspect. So, you know, don't depend on them. And it doesn't have to be someone whose sole job is being a vocal producer. It could be a friend that you trust that has a good ear. Just bring somebody with you that you trust to make sure you're you're doing your best work there. Um, if you're mixing, bring someone who has an ear who can recognize adjustments that need to be made during a mix. Once again, don't trust the house engineer to control your mix unless you've had a previous working relationship with that house engineer and you've had good success and uh, or, or unless that house engineer has a good reputation for doing that. You know, that's different. But do not let the house engineer, by any circumstance, tell you what to do creatively. It is not their job to control your song or tell you to change things about your song. That's not their job. So don't let a house engineer intimidate you into changing your work unless you agree with, you, you feel like they have good ideas. But just know that if they are inserting themselves into your work, then you're going to you're going to have to give them credit for that, especially if they're changing your lyrics around. They, they've now become a writer to your song. So just keep that in mind, which you shouldn't bring to the studio. Do not bring drugs or alcohol to the studio. One, drugs are illegal. You don't want to put the studio in any type of legal jeopardy Two, you're not there to party you're not there to turn up you're there to make a record you're there to make a hopefully a hit record and I know some people think that well I, some people are like well I can't make a song unless I'm drunk or high first of all when you're drunk or high you don't know what sounds good you just don't it may sound you may think it sounds good then you go home sleep on it the next day you listen to it you're like oh man this sounds awful because you were drunk and high in the studio wasting time messing up the song messing up your money it's just not worth it do not bring an entourage don't bring your homeboys your homegirls don't bring anybody who isn't directly involved with the creation of the song why because they're just going to distract you they're there to turn up. They're there to party. You're there to make a song. They are, as a result, they are in the way because of that. So only bring people there that are contributing towards creating the song. When you get to the studio, you should arrive early, at least 20 minutes early. So that you have enough time to check in with the receptionist or whoever you got to check in with and get set up. Don't enter the room that you reserved until the previous user of the room has vacated. Why? Because it's rude and you wouldn't want somebody that you don't know coming in while you're trying to finish up your session and having an opinion on it or whatever, or maybe you just don't want to share it with anybody yet. I'm like that. I don't want people to hear anything that I've done until it's finished. And when you get in the room, don't touch any of the equipment without the engineer's permission. 
some engineers are, are territorial and some studios have rules where they don't want you touching anything and you don't want to break anything anyway. So how long should you be in the studio? Personally, well, it depends, you know, it, it kind of depends on the genre. You know, I've done rap before. I realized that I can record rap faster than I can record R&B. But if I'm recording a song, one song, I usually book between four to six hours, depending on how complex the song is, how many, how many components the song has, how intricate are the, the vocal arrangements. Um, so six to eight hours, I recommend just to be on the safe side. And the same goes for when you mix a song. I never spend more than eight hours in the studio at a time because I want to avoid getting burnt out. All right, once you get burnt out, you just you just become ineffective and burnout. So burnout on a on when on a recording session, you get tired. You start delivering a mediocre vocal performance. And in terms of burnout on the mix, your ears get tired. When your ears get tired, you don't hear things properly. So it's important to not get burnt out. Um, also, I don't recommend trying to record and mix a song, the same song in the same day. You're not going to get the best result. You need time after you record it to sit back, let it process, step away from it, and then on another, like start writing ideas on what you want to do in the mix and spend some time, spend a few days just writing down different ideas. Like, yeah, I want to drop the beat out here or I want this part to have an echo or whatever you do, but don't record and mix the same day. Give it some time. So here's a few, a few tips for using your time efficiently. Don't take too many breaks. You're not there to take breaks. You're there to work. Stay focused. Don't get caught up listening to your favorite parts over and over before the recording is done. That's just you just you're just in there wasting time. Don't go on social media. Don't engage in lengthy text conversations or phone conversations unless you have an emergency and put your phone on silent. The last thing you want is to be in the booth recording and you have like the perfect take and then all of a sudden your phone goes off and now you've just lost it. So make sure you you definitely turn your phone off or put it on silent. Lastly, what do you ask the engineer for before you leave? You don't just record the, uh, the song or do your mix and then walk out. You have to know what to ask for. The first thing you ask for is ask for them to save the entire session on your hard drive. So bring your hard drive. So I said bring your hard drive, get a physical hard copy on your hard drive of the entire session or have them upload the session to your cloud, whatever space you use for online storage, either or. But you're going to want a copy of the entire session. If you're recording uh, a song for the first time and it's not a mix, it's just a recording, just have them mix down just so you can listen to it, what you've recorded. And have them give it to you, whether they give it to you digitally or on your hard or on your hard drive is up to you. I reckon I, I personally will get a, a copy digitally because then I can access it anywhere. If you're mixing, make sure you get f at a minimum four different versions of your mix. You're gonna want the main version, um, unless it's ma ma actually five. You're gonna want a a, a, radi a a radio edit, a clean version, a dirty version. Uh, acapella, uh, instrumental, and a TV track. So the acapella, for you, if you don't know what acapella is, is just the vocals. The instrumental is just the beat, and the TV track is is a performance track. So it's usually the the beat with the background vocals on it. So that if you were to do a show, you could perform to that to that track. And before your mixing session, I recommend figuring out who you're going to have master the track mastering is basically taking the the mix and making it radio ready 
they do a lot of things just to make them make it louder and they they sweeten the sounds and they do a lot of a lot of technical things to make your song radio ready but figure out which mastering engineer you, you plan on mastering the mix and ask that mastering engineer how do they like their mixes you know how much headroom do they want do they want any headroom is basically how much space you have before the the volume gets to zero decibels um some mastering engineers are very specific about wanting uh effects on the uh, on the mix bus some don't don't want any effects on the mix bus so just check with your mastering engineer get the specifications from them and make sure that your mix is in compliance with how they like to master mixes and lastly tip your engineer your engineer is basically providing you a service just like any other service just like going to a restaurant or when you when you tip your waiter or tip your bartender tip your engineer uh, they'll thank you for it they'll in the next session they'll hopefully work even harder if you give them a good tip so that concludes my uh my two cents if you will on studio etiquette professionalism and uh how to be prepared i hope you found this episode informative and i will catch you on the next episode of the Trav torch show podcast peace